My spoiler sense is tingling. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Spider-Man Homecoming Spoiled episode. We're going to talk about some of the big things that happened in Spider-Man. So this is your warning. If you haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming, do not watch this video. The first big spoiler we're going to talk about is Liz, the girl that Peter is in love with. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where Peter goes to pick her up for a date and the door opens and it's Michael Keaton, which of course he plays the Vulture. So Liz is the daughter of Vulture. Uh, this leads to the Vulture eventually figuring out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and they've been fighting throughout the movie, of course. Uh, normally they leave this up for you know Norman Osborn, but being that I don't know if they're even going to introduce Norman Osborn in these movies... Uh, the Vulture is kind of the de facto, well, I know who you are, and he's going to use that secret later type of thing. So yeah, Liz is the Vulture's daughter, and of course this leads to problems. Next up, Pepper Potts returns. No one saw that coming, right? Uh, near the end of this movie, it almost turns into a de facto Iron Man movie, because she pops out, and then uh, they're, they're going to announce Peter Parker as the new member of the Avengers, they had a new suit for him and everything, and he decides he's going to be the street-level superhero for now. And <laughs> so, of course, Pepper Potts is like, I've come up with this whole press conference for this. And he goes, we'll think of something. And Happy Hogan pulls out an engagement ring, and she's like, yeah, we can think of something better than that. And it, it almost felt like an Iron Man movie for about 30 seconds. So, yeah, Pepper Potts returned. Nobody really saw that one coming because they've all but pretty much been trying to make excuses for her not being in the movies you know until now so that was kind of a nice surprise next up is the character of aaron davis played by donald glover um aaron davis in the comics is a character called the prowler and now i don't know if they're going to introduce the prowler in this because he didn't seem like that kind of character i think they just wanted to set up a future character which is his nephew which is the future spider-man miles morales I don't know if that's just an Easter egg. I don't think it is. I think it's too much part of the story to be an Easter egg. I think Miles Morales will eventually be in these movies. Maybe they're just looking for a contingency plan for when Tom Holland's not going to be Spider-Man anymore. I don't know. But that being said, they introduced that character to introduce Miles Morales. Though we haven't seen him yet, you know, you know he's going to be coming eventually. Next up, and this is one of my favorites because I am a huge fan of Michael Mando. He plays Mac Gargan, who in the comics, those fans of the comics knew what was coming the second they heard his name. He's going to be the Scorpion, and there's really not much to say. He's going to be awesome as him. The next up is Zendaya, who plays Michelle. Um, this is the one I think the fanboys are going to be mad about the most. Um, her character in this movie... She seems like a side character, but it almost they, it almost felt like they were trying too hard to make her feel just little by little more important. And in the end, uh, they say, you know, they she's like, I don't have any friends, uh, but those that I do have call me MJ. So yeah, she's the new MJ. She's not Mary Jane Watson. Her name is Michelle, but her friends call her MJ. So a lot of people are think are going to get mad about that, especially the big time fanboys. They're going to be like, well, you're trying to make it too diverse. You know what? They're just trying to change things up. So we don't get the same exact movie over again. You know, we got a perfect Peter Parker, you know, if they're going to make little changes, I mean, flash is different. You know, he's definitely not the big, you know, blonde haired jock, you know, they're making little changes. As long as we get a perfect Peter Parker, should we really be upset? Next is that Aunt May figures out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. She walks in his bedroom, he's wearing the suit, and she drops the what the fuck line and it, the movie cuts off. You know, I'm almost happy they're kind of getting this out of the way. Um, because the changes that they're making, I think they're trying to avoid telling the same exact story. And like they did for Iron Man at the beginning where... There's no real secret identity comes out and says, hey, I'm Iron Man. And that kind of just negates that whole secret identity thing. Though, you know, Spider-Man's still going to have a secret identity. Uh, those closest to him will at least already know that he's Spider-Man. And we don't have to write a whole movie around it, which we can move on to other things. So honestly, her knowing that he's Spider-Man is honestly a good thing. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. What did you think of Spider-Man Homecoming? Feel free to comment on it down in the section below. But remember, it's only just one guy's opinion. I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Gino. Till next time.